Hello everyone and welcome to the final whistle. Not in the studio today, back in the car. But you know what? We have to speak about Jaden Sancho. Also, we have to speak about the Crystal Palace game that's um, going to be happening later. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to uh, touch on Jaden Sancho. So Sancho apparently was again late um, for training. So bear in mind that this is after Ten Hag gave him three months off last season, midway. Well, not midway, it was actually in the beginning of the season. Gave him three months off um, from all footballing duties at Manchester United. Um, this is after Ten Hag called him out based on the fact that he was pitching up late for training. Some people can agree, some people can disagree, but you have to keep in mind that this is after Ten Hag gave him three months off. So, in my opinion, I feel that if your manager is calling you out, saying that you are not training good enough, and you have been giving a three-month vacation, practically a vacation, not a vacation, but three months away from footballing duties, I think you have to seriously look at yourself. <clears throat> um, there's no reason for Ten Hag to be calling him out in public if A, he wasn't, um, if A, he was training well, Ten Hag wouldn't call him out in public, and B, if Sancho was actually playing well, Ten Hag wouldn't call him out in pl uh, public. So he is, in fact, not doing either. He's not uh, playing well in the first team, and he's not training well and or pitching up late to training. So now, as I said, there has been a rumor that he pitched up again late for training. Um, and Ten Hag basically banished him from all first team facilities. Um, there is Manchester United players, so players within the team that is basically urging, is basically urging Sancho to apologize to Ten Hag. Um, but you know, my viewpoint on that is that even if Sancho does apologize, I don't see him crawling his way back into the first team. I really don't see it as as a Manchester United fan. Look, he's had more than enough time to, to prove himself under three managers now, two managers if you want to put it at, as two. Um, more than enough game time. Um, and he's just not lived up to the expectations that we thought he would. Now, whether that's on Sancho... I think that's a definite. And obviously, any player coming to Manchester United, it will be difficult to live up your, to your full potential. But the fall off from Sancho has been concerning, and especially if it's coupled with the rumours going around about his punctuality, his training as a whole. Um, yeah, I really don't see a, a way back for Sancho from this point. I think that we will definitely be, be looking to sell him in January. Now, what we'll get for Sancho, we, um, I'm highly doubtful that we'll even get half of what we um, paid for Sancho. I think it was in the region of 85 million. Um, if we can get 30 million, that would be an absolute great piece of business. Um, apparently, there's a few clubs interested and I've heard that Dortmund might be interested. Um, but then, you, you know, interested in actually doing a deal for the amount of money that Manchester United wants to receive is another story. So, yeah, I don't think we'll, we'll see Sancho in a Manchester United shirt again. And then also, I just wanted to touch on, um, I know a lot of people are saying, you know, it's not an important game. So the game against Crystal Palace this evening, a lot of people are saying, you know, it's not an important game. Okay, we, we are the cup holders first and foremost, but... Even besides that, I think we will be seeing a full debut from Amrabat, which I think holds a lot of significance in our season. Um, it's a player that we've all been looking forward to seeing. It's a player that is much needed in the Manchester United squad. So, you know, to see him have his full debut, I think it's going to be very beneficial. He's going to get some minutes. Um, hopefully they can uh, play Varane as well. Baran can maybe get some minutes in as well, ease him back into first team duty um, so that when he's ready, 
He's able to hit the ground running um, when we do play in the Premier League. Um, so, yeah, I think we just need to focus on Amrabat. And what I'm expecting from Amrabat is, firstly, I expect him to play his position. So, hopefully, they rest Casemiro. Um, so, I do expect him to play his position. So, if it's Amrabat and Eriksen, perhaps, um, that could be something that we would do. Um, I'm expecting to see Amrabat get on the ball, uh, dictate play, have a high pass accuracy percentage. Um, you know, I just want to see him do his basics really well. Not expecting any goals, not expect, expecting any, um, you know, outrageous pieces of play. I just want to see someone who is, as I say, a steady Eddie. That's what I want to see. I want to see someone who's hopefully very fit. Um, because, yeah, fitness has been questioned at Manchester United for the start of the season. So, hopefully, he comes in and he's way fitter than the rest of our midfielders. Um, so, yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed for that. But in terms of the match result that I'm predicting, I would say um, I'm expecting a 3-1 victory to Manchester United. Um I think we're going to kick on from our victory from Burnley. We should definitely win this game against Crystal Palace. Then we face them again in the Premier League. Um, I think we're going to put out, obviously, a weaker team. In the Premier League, we'll put out the stronger team just so that they don't get accustomed to our uh, patterns of play. Um, I hope, hope Tenag switches it up with regards to that um, because, you know, sometimes you win the first game against an opposition and the second game is slightly um, more difficult. So yeah, I'm expecting a 3-1. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys are expecting. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.